Let's talk about the uniqueness of templates. So what is a template? A template is a website that has not been made into a website yet. It's a model, right? Kind of like when you go to the dentist and they have you put all that gunk in your mouth and hold it and they pull it out and you have your mouth, right? They can take a good look at it now because they, they built that cast, right? Well, that's what a template is. Where do you see templates? in template stores. How many of you guys ever got a WordPress website and you needed a template and you went to somewhere like ThemeForest and you bought a template? You know, you kind of browse through the selection and you find one that fit your industry, your color scheme, and you just went ahead and bought it, okay? Well, in our case, we do uniqueness with templates, okay? Here are a couple of points I wanna make. One, we have temp, there are artistic templates and functional templates. I usually tell people, Owners of things think they want artistic templates, but they're headaches. Artistic templates have lots of moving parts. They have to be attended to. If you want to create a lot of variation, you have to go through lots of variation variations in order to cover all the uniqueness of all the templates. But most people, when they arrive on a website, they don't care about the artistic part. They're looking for the functional information. Now, you may have an artistic website anyway. You want everyone dri driving people to you. And we can do artistic websites. We can do any template you want, long, small, short, whatever. Doesn't matter. We can do anything, okay? We can make templates in your image, okay? Um, whatever website you want. And I'll fit them with our power and our variability. But to keep matters simple, functional websites work 99% of the time. People land on a website looking for information. We redirect them to you through that fan base or affiliate website, or that website can stand alone and walk people through the information. Videos can be included, so on. And yeah, variation videos, we can mix match or we can match through channels. Sets of videos that apply to specific pages of the pitch, okay? So we can do that. And then all the pages lead people to wherever they're supposed to go next, which is where you want them to go. Like if you have a shopping cart, you don't want us to create 6,000 projects, and that means 6,000 shopping carts. You would hate to deal with 6,000 shopping carts, but they, you won't have to. All of those 6,000 projects are going to have a button saying browse the selection or buy now or whatever, and it's going to lead people to your one shopping cart. All those websites will filter people to your one shopping cart. Or they're all going to have a button saying schedule a call that goes to your one place where you want guys to schedule a call. Okay, and yeah, for those of you that work with partners, if you're thinking bigger, you can mix and match the links for scheduling the calls or if it's territorial, Chicago, across all the sites, schedule call goes to your Chicago guy. Atlanta, across all the sites, schedule call goes to your Atlanta guy. Miami goes to your Miami guy. Okay, all these things are easy enough for us to do. It's just strategy. Okay, you tell us the links you want and where they apply or how they apply and we'll just set the whole thing up. If you've got a whole listing of products, 10,000 in your Shopify account, you can send us that breakdown and Excel, that database of all your project, uh, all your products or whatever it is you're selling. So the titles, descriptions, image links, et cetera, the destination URLs, and we'll just make sure to filter that stuff into all these sites and have them all lead to your Shopify account. Get it? To the appropriate page for each product. Okay, so, you know, the product three page goes to the product three and the product 15 page goes to the product 15 and so on. So again, that's easy. It's just strategy. We set all up. Um, and then when you have tons of websites doing that through directories, it's really amazing how far you can go with all of this. All right, so what were we talking about? Uniqueness of templates. Do you have to have totally unique template structures, like a certain number of columns by a certain number of rows? Do they all have to be unique? No, there are only so many columns by so many rows that makes sense to the eye <laughs> on a website. You can't say, well, one's gonna be just one column going down, but another website's gonna be split in half. It's gonna have two sections, but another one's gonna be split in thirds. Another one's split in fourths. Another one's split in fifths. It's not gonna make any sense, right? So there are only a certain number of columns possible, like one or, you know, one, two, or three. That's it. And then when it comes to sections going down, like rows, right? That's just how many sections are you going to have? Well, our templates allow us to flip things and reorder things within the sections. Like if, if we have a sidebar, it can go from the left to the right or the other way around. And then if there are four or five items in the sidebar, we can mix and match the orders, okay? Things like that. And um, 
so on. And then as we go down the page, we can flip sections on or off, depending on what we want to do for variety and variability, okay? So we already created the framework to allow lots and lots of combinations, like 6,000. <laughs> now, um, anyone who says, but is it true that one template gets put out there and Google sees it, another template that's identical gets put out there and Google has to choose? No, here's why. Um, again, templates, it's too hard to make templates terribly different. There are only so many color schemes that look good to the eye professionally. And a lot of people will choose between hot colors, cold colors, or yellows. Uh, it's hard to see too many purples unless it's applicable directly, right? If you've got a fire damage website, you have lots of reds and blacks, you know, uh, things like if you have flooding, you have a lot of blue, <laughs> you know, this kind of thing is common. Plumbing websites tend to be blue, right? So Google sees a limited number of templates. But that would mean like if you went to ThemeForce and bought a template and somebody else went to ThemeForce and bought a template, you put your images and content and stuff on it, they put their images and content and stuff on it, then is there a problem? No. Google's expecting that. So each template is going to be, you know, from a stack so that, again, we go overboard on purpose to create as much variety as possible anyway. But we're going to create so much variety Sites look different to Google, even structurally, okay? And then the fact that the menu links are in different orders, the fact that sidebar items are in different orders, the fact that sections on or off, they're not even the same number, website to website. Sitemaps don't have the same number of pages, okay? We can, we can have 1,000 pages on one website, 987 pages on another, 1,012 pages on another. And then even the sitemap URL orders are totally different. Everything is different. Okay, nothing's the same because we control that, even remote control. If, if we put out a thousand websites and found that we forgot something, it takes us minutes to fix it because we remote control all the websites from a central console. Okay, so with that in mind, template uniqueness, a stack of colors, fonts, arrangement of items, flipping sections on or off. Uh, being able to, to maneuver, rearrange menu items or number of pages in the main menu, um, number of pages in the sitemap, what things show up on the inner pages. We can have sidebar items show up or not show up, another section show up or not show up on the inner pages, things that we want to add or not add. We can mix and match that to our heart's content. We do. Okay, Create so much uniqueness, it worked for the dispatch center and it'll work for you.